Hello and welcome. My name is Eric and I'm here to help you to discover biblical truth and to apply it to your life. Now, the Colossians were facing a serious spiritual threat. False teachers were proclaiming a new way of doing things, a dangerous way. They were promoting their own religion, which brought Jesus down from his exalted position, subjecting him and themselves to a hierarchy of angels. God was too far above this human world, so man would have to work his way up a chain of angelic beings, worshiping them to eventually get to God. You had to be in the know with these people in order to be able to do that. Only then would you be complete. Now, Paul wrote his letter to the Colossians to encourage them to not give in to this teaching, that in Jesus Christ was all the wisdom and knowledge that they needed. In him, we are complete. We don't have to try to curry favor with God when we have a relationship with the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ. In our last video, we observed that Jesus is better than any theological or philosophical system because all that they do is enslave. They can't make it complete. Only Jesus can do that, and he is victorious over them all. Now, in this video, Paul continues that train of thought, pointing out that man-made religion will not help you because it is not based in Christ. It's important for us to have the right navigational bearing to properly and joyfully live the Christian life. So let's take a look at what Paul wrote in Colossians 2, 16 through 23. Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath day, things which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels, taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind and not holding fast to the head from whom the entire body being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments grows with the growth which is from God. If you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourselves to decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, which all refer to things destined to perish with use, in accordance with commandments and the teachings of men? These are matters which have, to be sure, the appearance of wisdom in self-made religion and self-abasement and severe treatment of the body, but are of no value against fleshly indulgence. So, man-made religion is of no value. It will not help you because it does not come from Jesus. In this passage, Paul gives us several points about such religion. First, man-made religion lacks substance. Second, it does not originate with Christ. Third, it does not last. And four, it does nothing to help you stop sinning. So let's take a look at the first of these, that it lacks substance. This is found in verses 16 through 17. Therefore, no one is to act as your judge in regard to food or drink or in respect to a festival or new moon or a Sabbath day, things which are a mere shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Now, the false teachers around Colossae were a strange mixed bag of beliefs, combining some Greek philosophical thought with Jewish legalism. Included among all that were strict rules regarding what you ate and what you drank and, and when you worshipped. They applied the Old Testament dietary laws and said that they must be followed. They possibly promoted the avoidance of alcohol and, other, and followed guidelines uh, and other types of beverages. Uh, much like a Nazarite vow, the Nazarites, they took their vows and they weren't allowed to drink alcohol. They followed uh, other guidelines for festivals laid out in the Old Testament, like Passover, the Feast of Booths, other festivals along those lines. And they possibly incorporated into their calendar a local festival when people worship the new moon, signifying its return and the giving of life. And it seems that they were adamant that worship must occur on the Sabbath. That is the seventh day of the week. That is our Saturday. Now, this was the type of stuff that they were saying that if you truly want to live the Christian life, you must do these things and do it our way. They spoke condescendingly to the Colossian believers about this. But Paul writes to the book Colossians, don't let them judge you regarding these things. Don't give in to their judgmental attitudes and let it say, sway you from the true course. Don't let their words get to you. Just brush it off. 
Verse 17 tells us that these things are a mere shadow of what's to come. The substance belongs to Christ. What false teachers were promoting, Paul calls a shadow. Shadows are fleeting. Shadows sometimes appear bigger than the real thing, but shadows are not the real thing. Without the real thing, the body, the shadow would not exist. So what is greater? The shadow or the body? It's the body. All of the things that were mentioned point to something far greater, something far more solid, far less temporal. They point to Christ and the future that believers have with him, for he is the substance. And man-made religion lacks substance. Now, there might be some good points in there somewhere, some kernel of a truth even, but man-made religion incorporates things as solid that are in reality fleeting vapors, a shadow on the wall. These things are meant to point us to something, to someone else. Now, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the devil tried to get him to turn a stone into bread. Jesus responded that man does not live by bread alone, but bread alone, by food alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Food and drink are necessary for life, but even more important is the spiritual nourishment that can only be found in God's word. The food restrictions in the Old Testament were to separate God's people as a holy people distinct from the surrounding nations. Their holiness was to reflect God's holiness. They were to distinguish between clean and unclean. Now, the book of Acts records Peter's vision of a blanket being lowered down to the earth with all sorts of animals, unclean animals, and a voice commanding him to eat. Peter didn't want to do that. But God told him that what God has cleansed no, to no longer consider unholy. Now, this was in reference to going to the Gentile nations, but, but it can be applied to food here as well. We're no longer bound by those dietary restrictions. Their purpose was to separate out God's people. Now, God separates his people out by another way. Now, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. The fruits of the Spirit show his ongoing work in us, marking us as different. And in John 13, 35, Jesus remarks, By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Now, as to the festivals and, and new moons and Sabbaths, uh, the, these times of year, these events always pointed to something greater. Many of the festivals were reminders of what God had done in the past, even what he promised to do in the future. The Sabbath was given as a day of rest, pointing to the eternal rest that we can only find in Jesus Christ. Now, over in Romans 14, Paul puts the shoe on the other foot. Starting in verse 4, going through 6b, uh, he says, Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person regards one day above another, or another regards every day alike. Each person must be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it for the Lord. See, all these things are a shifting shadow. Uh, they, they point to something more. They point to someone greater. And in, in Jesus, one finds identity, promises fulfilled. One finds hope for the future. In Jesus, one finds peace and rest. Man-made religion will not do that because it lacks substance. It's not based on the true reality that is, that is Jesus Christ. Therefore, don't let others trick you, judge you, peer pressure you into adding anything to Jesus. He doesn't need help to do his work. He wants you to find all that you need in him. And that leads us to our, our next reason that man-made religion is worthless. It doesn't originate in Christ. Verses 18 and 19. Let no one keep defrauding you of your prize by delighting in self-abasement and the worship of angels, taking his stand on visions he has seen, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the entire body, being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments, grows with a, grow, grows with a growth which is from God. Now, to defraud someone of a prize, this is a sports analogy. Uh, Paul was fond of using sports analogies. It's the picture of the umpire or the referee calling against an athlete, keeping them from winning the prize. Now, we see this even today. A touchdown's called back because the players ruled us down. Or the receiver catches the football and runs downfield to score, only to be called back because he stepped out of bounds. Sometimes, and it seems to be used in the case here, 
The word implied that this was done unfairly. The false teachers at Colossae and their teachings stood a chance stood a chance at hindering the Colossians' walk for Christ. Now, man-made religion will do that. Even faithful believers can sometimes be swayed away from the narrow path. They're saved, but their lives no longer testify to Christ. Their witness of Christ is ruined, and they are guaranteed a defeated life unless they return to Christ as their first love. So what were these false teachers doing that could strip the Christians of a victorious life? Well, first, they delighted in self-abasement and worship of angels. Now, uh, the word for self-abasement here, this is a, simply a word that means humility. And, and Paul uses it elsewhere, even later in this letter, as a good quality. But the context here seems to indicate something else. The false teachers took humility to another level. They took a low view of mankind. They viewed the angels as higher than man and therefore to be worshipped. Scripture takes a different view. Angels exist on a spiritual realm, but it is only said of, uh, of man that he was created in the image of God. In 1 Corinthians 6, 3, Paul writes that, Do you not know that we will judge angels? Now, what exactly Paul meant here has been the source of much speculation and discussion. But for our purposes, it points out that the false teachers were not right in putting angels into such a position above humanity. Indeed, the author of Hebrews says of angels, Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? We are not lower than angels. That is not our place in creation. So where did these ideas come from? The false teachers based their information, uh, their new religion, on visions. They delved into and created detailed information on what they had seen. Now, of course, the problem with that is that the devil can appear as an angel of light. Uh, we discussed uh, last time how the devil's goal is to keep people from having a relationship with God through Jesus, his son. And one way to do that is to convince people that Jesus isn't who he said he was. That was the, that was the lie that the false teachers at Colossae had brought, bought into. Now, more details were surely added in these visions, but Paul says that all of this was then even added to by man, inflated without cause by his fleshly mind. Many people come to see visions and to have new revelations. Some say that these things even come from Jesus. Unfortunately, they disagree with what God has already revealed about himself, about us, and about Jesus. Jesus perfectly explains the Father, John 1.18. And is the one who speaks even now, Hebrews 1, 2. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. God will never contradict himself. So how does this defrauding happen? Uh, here it says in the verses, not holding fast to the head from whom the entire body being supplied and held together by the joints and ligaments grows with a growth which is from God. Now, we can live a, a defeated life if we lose sight of the fact that Jesus is the head of the body, the church. From him flows all the nourishment that we need to grow as believers, to live abundant and victorious lives. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. The branch cannot survive without the vine. Now, too often Christians seek to live apart from Jesus. They seek to pull him down from his preeminence, just like these false teachers were doing. Now, you will never experience spiritual growth. You will never know true victory if you don't look to Jesus. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2 tells us, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, that is the people referenced in Hebrews 11, testifying to the importance of faith, not watching us live the Christian life, he goes on, Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We are encouraged to cast off sin and false belief and everything else and look to Jesus. Man-made religion cannot help you win the race. It will not guarantee you a prize because it does not originate in Jesus. Only in Jesus is their victory and reward. Man-made religion makes it all about you and what you do. 
True religion is focused on Jesus and what he has done, is doing, and will do, for he is eternal. Man-made religion doesn't last. This is Paul's third critique of man-made religion. Look at verses 20 through 22. Oops, forgot to put that up there. <laughs> if you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, why, as if you are living in the world, do you submit yourself to decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, which all refer to things destined to perish with use in accordance with the, te with the commandments and teachings of men? The Christian has died to died with Christ. Jesus took our old selves to the cross with him. We're no longer bound by sin in the domain of darkness ruled by Satan. We are no longer under his authority like the rest of the world. So Paul asks, why are you acting like the world? Why are you looking to man-made religion to find what you already have in Christ? Why are you submitting yourself to such things? These commands are based not on the things from above, but on the things of earth. These things are all destined to perish with use. All of these things, the festivals, the dietary regulations, all of these are certain to be done away with. They are all, they all become corrupt with use. And that word carries the idea of being abused. Now, Jesus was confronted many times about the Sabbath. The Pharisees had added so many regulations as to what could and could not be done on the Sabbath. And Jesus was acting outside of those man-made rules. Jesus told them that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, Mark 2, 27. The Sabbath had been abused and had lost its true meaning underneath the burdens of the Pharisees. Man-made religion will not last. It might start off well. It might draw from God's word, but it gets added to and the true teachings get abused to form something new, something false, and something dangerous. All, and all of these things will pass away. In the end, Jesus is the one in whom we find eternity. And this, this is the fourth characteristic of the Swat teaching, is that it does nothing for sin. These are matters to be sure, uh, to be sure that have the appearance of wisdom and self-made religion and self-abasement and severe treatment of the body, but are of no value against fleshly indulgence. Man-made religion sounds good. It promises that if you do these things, it will work out well. The false teachers at Colossae promoted their man-made religion, their list of rules and regulations, their humility, and their asceticism, that is the denying of earthly pleasures, food and such, in order to draw closer to God. Now that sounds like it might work, uh, but it doesn't recognize the core problem of our humanity, and that is sin. These external things, even these attitudes, do nothing in regard to sin. They will not keep you from sinning, and in certain instances will actually lead you into sin. Your humility could lead to pride. Your abstinence, likewise. Sin starts off as an attitude that says to God, I don't need you. I can do this on my own. Now, there is the main problem with man-made religion. Man is separated from God due to sin. Our actions and attitudes and thoughts are an affront to a holy God. But God made a way for us to spend eternity with him, to have peace with him. And that was through his son, Jesus. The penalty for our sins was and is death. The thing is, Jesus took your place and mine on the cross. He died our death. And in his death, he defeated the powers of darkness, making a way for us to have peace with God. Not only do we have peace with God through Jesus, he frees us from the power of sin. No longer are we bound to sin. We can say no to temptation. We don't have to give in to it. We are free to serve him and to live for him. We are free to grow in Christ's likeness. We just have to put him first. Jesus is the answer to sin, not man-made religion. Now, if you find yourself flirting with legalism, with mysticism, with ideas barred from man-made religion, I'm going to warn you that you will not know true peace, the true peace that is found in Jesus. You will not experience the freedom from sin that is found in him. If you've never placed your faith in Jesus, there is no time like the present watching this video right now. You can search all you want, but you can only find what you truly need 
in Jesus. All you have to do is to ask him to save you. Make him the Lord of your life. Turn from yourself and the world's way of doing things. Ask his forgiveness and commit to live for him. Now, Christian, don't give in to the arguments of man-made religion and live defeated lives. Trust in Jesus. He is the substance. He is the source. He is forever. He is the answer to sin. Live for him. Run for him. Man-made religion is worthless. Jesus is priceless. Now, next time we'll move on to Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, where we'll see where we are to look for answers. So thank you for watching, and God bless.